Hello, this is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to uh, start on our assignment, our g and assignment. And before we jump into SolidWorks, I want to do a uh, little discussion about g and callouts and specifically learning about datums and data simulators and uh, how we define those datums. So, uh, and then once we get through with this, we have a good idea about datums and how we apply them to our drawing, then we'll move over to SOLIDWORKS and work on the actual assignment. So let's get started. So here is our part, and it's the uh, capture block for assignment six. And we want to define some datums that are going to make sense when we fabricate this part. And since the part is going to sit, whoops, since the part is going to sit on the uh, mounting plate first, and this is how I want them to machine it. I want them to set the raw material on the milling machine just like this. I want to make this surface on the bottom. I want to have that represent datum A. And so to remind myself what I'm doing, I'll label that bottom surface with an A on there. And what I'm going to do is represent this little mouse pad thing is going to be the datum simulator. And a datum simulator is not a datum nor is this surface a datum. This is the surface of the part that I want to reference to datum A. This granite table is a datum simulator. It's as close as I can get to a perfect datum. Datum A lives on top of the surface here, and it's a theoretical plane. It's perfectly flat, perfectly thin, and it's just a theoretical thing. And so we have datums, datum simulators, and then we have features on the part that we're going to use to define the datum. So once I flip this part and I set it down on the granite table, well, back up a minute. Before I set it down on the granite table, this thing can be oriented and translated six different degrees of freedom. It's got three translation degrees of freedom, X, Y, and Z. And it can also rotate about three axes. It can rotate about X, rotate about Y, and rotate about Z. So this thing has three degrees of freedom, any three-dimensional part is going to have three degrees of freedom. But when I place this down on the datum simulator, I've now gotten rid of some number of degrees of freedom. So let's see if we can identify them. It can still move in X. It can still move in Y. But it can't move in Z because I'm telling it to sit on that table. So I got rid of one degree of freedom, one translational degree of freedom. Now by rotation, I can't rotate about the X axis because it would have to come up off the table. I can't rotate it in the Y direction, same reason. And so those two are tied down, but it can still spin in Z. And so I've gotten rid of one translational degree of freedom and two rotational degrees of freedom. So I've, got, I've tied down two degrees of freedom, excuse me, tied down three degrees of freedom, and I have three more left to tie down. And I want to tie these other ones down with another datum simulator. And so I don't have a nice gauge block, but we'll pretend like this is a highly precision ground perpendicular edges here, something you'd use on an inspection station that I'm going to use as another datum simulator. And so the second most important feature of my part or orientation of my part is this surface right here. Because this is a surface that's going to capture that RF load. And so I care a lot about that datum, so I'm going to reference this with a big B on here as datum B. And so I'm going, since this block is sitting on the data, datum simulator, and these edges are very much perpendicular to the bottom face here, then I'm going to use this as a datum simulator for datum B. And so once I set this down here, I'm going to take this part and I'm going to slide it over until it touches off on that datum simulator and now I've got rid of another two degrees of freedom. It can still move left to right but it can't move off this gauge block because I've told it to be snug up against that. So it can still move in one direction and it can't rotate in any direction. So I've got rid of two more degrees of freedom so I went from three went from six to three now I'm down to only one degree of freedom left. The first plane got rid of three degrees of freedom. Second plane got rid of two degrees of freedom. 
So now I need one more degree of freedom lockdown. And I want to do that with a, this datum I have drawn with a Marxel out here right through the middle of the part. I'm going to call the plane that passes through the middle of the part datum C. And I don't have a feature there that I can touch off on. But what I can do is get some more gauge blocks and put equal width gauge blocks on either side of this thing until this thing can no longer move left to right. And what that's saying is the theoretical center of this part between these two faces here and here, the theoretical center of those two faces is going to be my datum C. And we're going to use, we're going to use a uh, dimension, a feature of size. This is a feature of size between this face here. Get my little pointer here. Between this face and this face, the dimension between those two features is what we're going to define as a feature of size, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the uh, uh, assignment 5 here in a minute. So now once I put those gauge blocks in between here and here until this thing can't rattle back and forth anymore, I've defined all six degrees of freedom. And now my part is fixed in space, and those datums are defined. Datum A is on the bottom. Datum B is that face that's uh, touching off on the uh, gauge block. And then uh, datum C is the plane going right through the middle of the part indicated with that marker, that uh, Sharpie marker right down the middle of the part. So now that we've got the datums defined and understand what datum simulators are, now let's go take a look at SolidWorks and see if we can't incorporate these ideas into our drawing we're going to do.